Hi everyone. So I just want to touch on what I've learned over the past three weeks in this kindergarten course. So first thing I want to touch on is setting up a classroom environment so that the student feels accepted and acknowledged in the classroom. And when I was growing up, this didn't happen. It was always teacher centered. But what we've learned in this class, especially through the readings, such as environment as the third teacher, it is crucial that the students feel like they're their space reflects their learning and their attitudes in the classroom. We wanna make sure that it promotes comfortability, engagement, diversity, and inclusion so that these students feel like their voices are heard. So although there would be some structure in some organizations such as like a literacy corner and a math center, so that way you can set up specific stations so the students feel like there is some organization in the classroom, Overall, you want it to reflect their learning and their beliefs. So this means that you're not necessarily making your classroom aesthetically pleasing with all these bright colors and everything just flaunting everywhere, but you want to make sure that this space is kind of like a blank canvas. You want to make sure the walls are, are empty so that the students can showcase their work. You want to make sure that they feel that their work is represented in the classroom and that it's something they can be proud of so that when mom and dad come in or grandma and grandpa or your guardian or even other teachers in the school or other students, they can be like, look what I did. This is my work on the wall. And they feel proud to show that, to showcase that. Um, I want to touch on documentation a little bit because as a kindergarten teacher, I would reflect a lot of the Amelia Reggio documentation into my assessment of students. I want to take a student-centered and constructionist approach to my self-guided curriculum that uses self-directed experiential learning in relationship-driven environments. So essentially what that means is I want to make sure this is student-centered learning, student-centered, student-driven learning, I should say. So they have their ideas, they have their inquiry, but I want to make sure that I take that and I drive that into a lesson. So I'm not teaching them something they don't care about. I'm teaching them something that they're interested in and that reflects what they want to know and what they already do know. I want to make sure that we're building relationships in my classroom because as we know, one of the fourth frames um, of kindergarten are belonging and contributing, problem solving and innovating, self-regulation and well-being, and lastly, demonstrating literacy and mathematics behaviors. So I think it's crucial for there to be relationship-based learning in the classroom so that they are developing belonging, contributing, problem solving and innovating, as well as self-regulation and well-being. Because a lot of these kids come into the class with mom and dad or your guardians that do everything for you and they don't know how to collaborate with other students. So I think it's really important that when I'm creating these lessons plans and documenting these lessons plans that I'm I'm noticing a reflection of contributing, belonging, uh, self-regulation through the lessons. Uh, we watched an interesting video in class about a kindergarten teacher that took this student-centered learning approach and the sub subject of the day was on bees. So the teacher thought, where can I take this? So the first thing that she did was listened, asked questions, and recorded student conversations. So what do you know about bees already? Okay. And she would listen. She wouldn't interrupt. She would just listen and record what they know about bees. Then she said, what questions do you have about bees? Kind of prompting the inquiry of the students. So she took that information, what the students know, and some, some of them knew a lot and some of them had misconceptions about bees. And she took that, documented the whole process, and then later printed it off and put it on the wall. So this is tying into the environment as a uh, as a third teacher is now she's documented this and she can put it on the wall for the students to reflect on their learning. And then she took the students for the next couple of days to different gardens. She played them videos about bees. I'm sure she talked about them, did a couple lessons. Um, so the students had a better idea of bees, pollination, how honey works, everything like that. So the students could learn and, and get rid of those misconceptions. And then she asked them to draw a picture of bees because to reflect their learning and asked them to say what they know about bees. So she talked to each student individually. And I think this is really important too, because even though the lesson has a lot of collaborating, um, sharing ideas, sharing their knowledge, this is also she's taking time to individually talk to each student to document what they have learned. So you can see the growth where they have the misconceptions before, and then you see the growth through the pictures, through their knowledge, on the wall so you see the whole process while the teacher's documenting it all. And then at the end she can do some consolidation so having a conversation at the end of class saying okay what do we know now now that we've done 
minds on inquiry action going out to garden seeing how everything works and then consolidating with now what do we understand how do we understand this um and documenting that whole process so that not only can the students visualize their learning and see it for themselves on the wall but parents and guardians and other teachers other students can come into that classroom and feel like wow look at what these students have learned about bees etc etc so I really like that this showcases their knowledge and yet she's documented it through observation through student-centered approach to learning um, and this is the way I want to document my classroom my kindergarten classroom so that I can reflect their learning process I also wanted to talk a bit about inquiry to co and co-constructing inquiry. So as we learn in class, the cycle of inquiry is a chart that goes through the journey of inquiry. This chart looks like a child-centered approach to students' inquiry being about an indication of the student interest, how the teacher can hone those interests to make a lesson. Children will play, investigate, use materials, try out different strategies, spiraling, so if something doesn't work, they retry it. So you have that tangible evidence. and. Essentially, when you're co-constructing inquiry for the, for the students, you can see that they take an idea, they take something through play, through investigation, and you just kind of hone in on that. So you kind of either play with them, sort of direct the conversation, ask them questions, and adult documentation is all about, about, for, and with the students. So you're documenting about the students, for the students, and with the students. So you're playing with them and you're documenting their questions, their ideas, their play. It's like treat students as capable learners that can generate their own inquiry without full teacher direction. These are, yes, they are four, five, and six-year-old, but these are capable, confident, complex humans that are just so interested in learning. And I think we can really hone in on that depending on how we treat our classroom environment and how we set it up for success.